they are attending the meeting via Zoom, and that they are located in Wayne County, Michigan, unless otherwise stated when I call your name. Commissioner Colleen? Here. Commissioner Dobb? Here. Commissioner Clark Holman? Here. Commissioner Knizek? Chair Basham? Here. You have a quorum present. Next time. B, Chair's remarks? Uh, I really don't have any remarks uh, for the committee, but uh, I'd like to, uh, uh, next, next item, Madam Clerk. C, approval of the May 26, 2021 meeting minutes. Can I get a motion? I move Ooh. approval, Mr. Chair. Sounded like right. Commissioner Colleen and supported from Commissioner Coleman. Yes. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. Next item, Madam Clerk. D, unfinished business. There is none listed. Okay, moving right along. Item one, under new business, a discussion on the fiscal year 2020 Wayne County single audit findings and plan corrective action by the applicable departments and elected officials. Okay, uh, well, I'd like to uh, invite our uh, Auditor General, uh, her staff and her guest at this time. And Ms. Cora, please proceed and welcome. Bye. Okay. Trying to share the screen here. There it is. <coughs> um. Okay, it's not good. okay. There it goes. There we go. Marcy Core Auditor General, and I also have two staff members that are going to be here to assist me with the presentation Melinda Hayner and Mike Sanowski, if they want to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Mike Sanowski, Audit Manager. Hi, this is Mindy. I'm Supervisor. Supervisory Auditor. And we have representatives that I could see from Management and Budget, Shantik and Yogesh, if they'd like to introduce themselves. I'm not sure if Michael's on. Hi, good morning. This is Shantika Bullard from Management and Budget. I'm the Division Director of Grants, Compliance, and Contracts Management. Hi, uh, this is Yogesh Kisani. <laughs> I'm a Deputy Chief Financial Officer, Management and Budget. And I also saw Terry, Carol, and Samaya Harp from the Sheriff's Office and CDBG, if they'd like to introduce themselves. And that's all I saw. I'm not sure if anybody from the Treasurer's Office is on. I didn't see them. Terry, Carol, I'm the Division Director for uh, Community Development in the Department of Economic Development. Good morning, Samaya Harp, Samaya Harp, Director of Administration from the Sheriff's Office. Welcome. And I don't believe there's anybody from the treasurer's office. If they are, if they could introduce themselves. Okay, it doesn't look like that. So what we'll do, maybe the findings that are related to the treasurer's office, we won't cover them today. We could just maybe pass those for the day, ones that are for the treasurer's office. Sounds good. Okay, we'll get started here. This okay. is at the two meetings ago, we had Plant Moran came and they gave the presentation on the results of the fiscal year 2020 audit and the single audit findings. What we've normally done in the past, we take another meeting where we have the auditees and the responsible individuals for the findings come back and we talk about the conditions recommendation and their plan corrective action for those findings. So that's what this meeting is about today. I put together a little summary schedule of the audit find. It's got the finding number from the single audit. It's got the type of finding it was, whether it was repeat and what years it was repeat, the responsible party, then it shows a condition and recommendation. So I'll get started. I'll start with the first finding. This is for responsible parties, management and budget. It was a material weakness repeat finding. The county's general ledger and underlying financial records are not reconciled and closed in a timely manner. There were numerous adjustments that should have been identified by management that were instead identified during the audit of the county and component units. The recommendation was that the county should work with all departments to ensure that each has adequate resources to fully and accurately reconcile, record activity throughout the year, and identify and record year-end entries prior to the start of the audit. 
An independent review of, the, review of the reconciliations and trial balances prior to the start of the audit would assist in identifying and correcting potential errors. I'm not sure if we have any, if management wants to show us, the, let us know what the corrective action they plan to take. Yes, and, and uh, something I want to respond for management budget. Yes, good morning, commissioners. This is Yogesh Kisani, again, Deputy Chief Financial Officer. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is a repeat finding, and uh, we have been working throughout the year um, to, you know, appropriate staff. And obviously, we have, a, you know, not sufficient resources to do this. And meanwhile, the, because of the COVID hit, uh, we had a lot of furloughs. Um, so the things went south and, uh, you know, we were trying to get information from um, each and every department. And again, um, that was one of the reasons that we were not getting an information. And if you we were getting information, uh, you know, we have a one person who was taking responsibility for another three or four uh, positions. Yeah. So we are working on that. And I think uh, we did get most of the employees back in an October of um, 2020. So we are working toward us there. Hey, and my, my question would be is, uh, do you have plans so that next year we do an audit that we won't have another repeat finding? Uh, I would say we would not have it because by the time audit is done, we almost um, lost seven months, seven or eight months. By the time we got audit done, it was almost the end of March. So some of them, you know, even though we tried to, uh, you know, fix it, uh, might not be able to fix it right there. So we may need a little bit more time. We might not be able to fix right away in this year, but uh, definitely our attempt is there. Well, I know that we have uh, Andy Candrevis here from the administration and, uh, you know, they're good to work with us, but, you know, I guess just to cut through the chase, uh, we have a problem here. We don't want to have repeat finding after repeat finding after repeat finding. This is a personnel shortage. And could you relay that to the uh, county exec and see if we can't fix this thing so that next year we're not sitting here doing the same thing and wasting resources? Can I get a response? Yes. Understood, Mr. Chair. Andrew Candrevis from Wayne County Executive Warren Evans' office. Okay, we'll put that on the record as the administration agrees with us and we'll move forward. Thank you. The next finding is 2020-02. It was a material weakness and repeat finding. It's also management and budget. And you'll find most of the findings are related to management budget because the financial statement, you know, that is their financial statements. So whether it's to other departments, elected officials, management and budget always has a role in the findings. Condition was the county lacked overall monitoring of account balances during the year in order to compile complete and accurate financial results. It resulted in many audit proposed journal entries. The recommendation is the county should develop overall monitoring procedures to aid in ensuring that all activity in the fund is complete, accurate, and logical. This includes assigning an appropriate individual to each general ledger account, as well as several individuals would be responsible for the entire general ledger and financial statements to perform monitoring, analytical analysis, and adjustments as needed. Not sure if you have any questions with this one. It kind of is related actually, actually, to the first one. Actually, I do. I have a question for you. So it, it's pretty obvious we have a personnel shortage. Do uh, you feel uh, uh, that, you know, if the administration had the qualified personnel in management budget, that probably we could eliminate these multiple repeat findings? Yogi's could probably add into this too, but I think the shortage in personnel, especially during the pandemic when we had so many that were on furlough and also mm -hmm. during, I think it was in December of 2020, we lost Matthew Dubay. Yogi's did an outstanding Big job loss. taking over for him. But you know, we, there was a, we were up against a lot as far as staffing for fiscal year 2020. Thank you. Um, yep, yeah, and I, I may add commissioners. Yes, sure. that is correct. And Again, it's even though 
you know, management budget is responsible for a financial statement, but we are uh, highly dependent on other department and other elected offices to get the information in a timely fashion, so to speak. Uh, and if you don't get the information and sometimes it's too late, um, so now is the question, do we delay the audit at that point? Uh, that's where the materiality comes. And, you know, we just constantly chasing these uh, deadlines. So yes, uh, you know, at the same time during COVID, um, most of the elected offices, they lost their staffing too. So if somebody is working with one finance staff in a prosecutor's office, just for example, it was very difficult for them to provide us information, uh, even though for the audit purpose. Okay, uh, Commissioner Clean has his hand up. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and I don't know who can speak to this. My, my concern, because I've been on audit forever, my concern is always with this single audit uh, when we have, you know, 10 to 12 uh, findings, half of them are repeat findings. Uh, some of those findings have been here for two, three, or even four years. Uh, and I don't know, I, I, I don't know who has an opinion on this or if somebody does, I, I'll ask our Auditor General and then anybody else. At what point do the feds look at these audits and go, hey, Wayne County, eh, maybe we don't wanna send you any more money. I mean, at, at what point do we really run into uh, difficulty with the feds uh, with this number of findings and this number of repeat findings? You know, Madam Auditor General? You know, Ms. Kitty, I did add in two if he could. But the findings, I, want the, I think we have 12 findings, and there's only one finding that's actually related to a federal program, which would be the CDBG program. Yeah. All the other findings are financial statement findings, so they wouldn't affect any of our grant funding. So the feds don't worry about that? Our internal bookkeeping? They're look, they're not, the feds are looking at the grant funding findings if there's any dollars to disallow costs. Let's see. Okay. And, and and I don't, okay, that, that sounds logical to me. And I don't know if you know, Ms. Cora, somebody else. Are there other audits that the feds do with the county stuff that do not come to the commission? Shantika mm -hmm. may be able so, to add to that. So in terms of audit, this is our... Uh, major county-wide audit. Uh, so this is the right. one that's going to go into the harvester system that the other federal entities or that all federal entities will have access to and, and any public entity or anyone can go and look and see what our performance is. Uh, we may have the performance reviews for the individual um, awards. And I do not believe those uh, come to commission. Yeah. Uh, it, it and I would suggest, Mr. Chair, because uh, as I watched the flow of work, I was getting the idea that there was something, I understand now that there are uh, performance audits, uh, that maybe uh, the uh, Auditor General and maybe the Chair of Audit uh, should sit down with the department and go over what those um, performance audits are like. Uh, I don't think I want to do that at a full committee meeting or uh, anything like that, but I think this is a case where uh, we need to be kept apprised, right, uh, so that we understand all of the things that are going on outside of this, uh, what other comments the feds are making, uh, just so that we're on top of it and uh, better understand what the feds are or are not concerned about. So I don't know, Mr. Chair, I, I think there should be some sort of a uh, uh, a little meeting where the Auditor General and yourself get an update on what those performance audits are telling us. That's yeah. it. Thank you. If I, could also, just, go ahead. if I could also add on to this, that a long time ago, there was a Norton 65 is what we used to call it, where if there was any outside audits done of any of the county executive departments, a copy of the report was to be sent to our office. The, it, that ordinance is no longer on the books, but I can look, work with Felicia and the chair of water to see if that's something we could redevelop the ordinance, because I think it'd be a good thing for our office to at least receive copies of any type of performance audits that are being done. So it kind of would help us with our work too. We'll look and explore I, that. 
I don't disagree. And Commissioner Dobb, I think, had your hand up. Oh, you don't? No. Nope. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may finish up on that, uh, that sure. uh, let's look into that. Uh, the discussion is basically the same on an annual basis when we come here, because we've had personnel staffing issues for quite some time. Uh, and so we go through the same conversation. When are you going to get this fixed? Well, we don't have enough people and what's going on in other countywide elected's office. Uh, I just think for us to be better informed, uh, we should go back and look at whatever that previous ordinance was and uh yeah okay that's it thanks mr chair thank you um uh, please proceed Ms. Burr. okay we're on 2020-03 was a material weakness and material non-compliance a repeat finding the condition was instances where a county was not in comply with compliance with laws and regulations there is outstanding checks related to both road construction performance bonds and agency fund liabilities that are considered abandoned not distributed to the state Expenditures exceeded budget amounts in certain expenditure groups within general fund, COVID fund, capital project fund, and multiple non-major governmental funds. Original budget for law enforcement special revenue fund, original and final budget for victim witness special revenue fund would have resulted in a deficit. Original budget in the community correction special revenue fund would have resulted in a deficit. No budget for GWEDC or building authority. So this is a several different items that were related to laws and regulations. And the recommendation was that the county implement a process that identifies specific individuals for identifying and monitoring applicable compliance requirements throughout the year. In addition, the county should file a voluntary disclosure agreement when submitting this achievement to the state. Somebody from the county m and would like to respond to that? Yes, um, again, this is Yogis Kistani. I'll go item by item. Uh, the first item, outstanding checks and um, road construction performance bonds. And I think that's where uh, we have a lot of bonds for the construction related activities and um, historical information. We definitely need to have uh, some extra resources to go through each and every bond deposits. And we have to send out a letter to the construction companies, whether they are there or not. And some of them, we do need a letter from our DPS um, uh, engineers that this project has been completed so far. So I think there's a lot of dirty details that we have to go through uh, in this one. And again, that's, we don't have much uh, um, resources to do this uh, job at this point. Uh, we began doing in uh, 2000, 20 in the beginning, I think, 2019. And obviously then, you know, things went different way and we just don't have any resources to go through the each and every little bonds. That will take us to an achievement. And I think we have been working with the Corp Council to revise our, um, revamp our achievement policy. Uh, because it's our achievement policy is old and we are working with our corp council to finalize the policy and that's where we need to analyze our entire liability accounts um, and then when we need to estimate to the state. Uh, the COVID-19 fund again that's the was a new fund uh, you know we did our best to set up that fund there was a lot, a lot of funding in there and we work our best way to do whatever the necessary to account for the transactions. And I would say there was a, a very minimum error, I would say in COVID-19 fund, um, looking at this one. Um, law enforcement budgets for spatial revenue fund. I think that's just uh, uh, again, oversight. Um, again, oversight, I guess, because, you know, we, we didn't, we didn't have any budget director, uh, during the year, you know, who really used to do budget versus actually on a regular basis. So again, we are taking care of that item at this point. Uh, we learned our lesson, uh, to make sure around, uh, June end, end of June, we are going to look at, again, this analysis budget versus actually, and we want to make sure that, you know, none of the funds will go 
in a deficit. And if there is a, we need to transfer a general fund, we'll try to take care of that. Um, GWEDC, again, this was a, just an oversight um, in their you know, administration side, and I think they're taking care of that. Well, uh, moving right along, Ms. Carr. No, we're on number four. So material weakness repeat finding. The county does not have a review, review process in place to effectively identify and capitalize infrastructure projects or groups of assets. The county should develop overall monitoring procedures to ensure the capital assets are recorded for infrastructure projects as they are taking place. I guess in this uh, ordinance that was mentioned, will that, will that help us with this issue? Not with this one. That would be for the um, performance audits of out, by outside okay. organizations. So what would help us with this issue? This yeah. one, I think the county's come a long way on their capital assets. Yogi may want to add yeah. this. This has had to do with the infrastructure projects. Can I can I respond to Marcy again, sure. Commissioner um, Chair? Yes, we have worked so hard in the capital assets area for almost uh, five years. I think we were there. In fact, I expected not to have these findings, but again, later on, most of the projects are being done at the DPS, um, Department of Public Works. And again, engineers are involved, a lot of other parties are involved in there. So I think we were able to cover almost, I would say 95, 98% of a population this year because of the you know, um, person staffing. And by the way, one of the even person we lost during um, furlough, COVID time, but we were able to get him by October, but still we were able to cover, uh, catch up, cover everything, but few of them, when we realized some of the invoices that, you know, were not um, given to us by almost like in a February. Um, and so, you know, we have done, um, we have implemented another control now that I'm working with um, DPS uh, um, m and director to make sure that she will work with our engineering department to make sure that any other expenses or construction that were done prior to September that will make sure that we will catch this. But I would say this, uh, I have a very good hope next year, this probably would not be there. Thank you, that's good news. Mm -hmm. okay, number of 2020-05 material weakness. This one, um, we can cover it, but we may want to come back and revisit it at the next meeting because this has to do with the treasurer's office. I'm not sure if anybody from the treasurer's office is on yet. Not anybody from the treasurer's office on yet? We'll do it at our next meeting. Okay, we'll skip this one. Okay. The next one is 2020-06, the sheriff's office. The condition was the county did not have procedures in place to ensure that the inmate property bank accounts were reconciled to the jail management system, that reconciled items are current and the controls are in place over cash functions. The recommendation is the county should develop a process to ensure that the inmate property bank account is reconciled to the jail management system, that cash reconciled items be reviewed for proper cheating to the state, and access to blank checks and number of check signers be limited to necessary personnel. Uh, Samaya, would you like to comment? Yes, through the chair, um, we do apologize profusely for this being a repeat yes. finding. Uh, we did not have, we, um, during the pandemic, we lost a few of our staff. Um, we did um, have the corrective action and we did uh, fix this issue, but we didn't do it in a timely manner. We did it in October. So this has been resolved from the sheriff's office. Uh, hopefully, and I'm sure, I'm 100% I'm sure that next year we will not have this finding ever again. Thank you. And if I could Thank also you. add, our office is looking at the jail inmate property. So we should have an audit before you within 60 days, I'm hoping. We take a deeper Thank dive you. into it. Thank you, appreciate that. Moving right along. <clears throat> Number seven, it's a material weakness. The county did not have procedures in place to ensure that Downriver Community Debt Service Fund activity was properly reconciled at year end. The recommendation was that the county should develop a process to ensure that the Downriver Community funds are reconciled timely and accurately. 
I can, um, if I may, I can take on sure. that. Sure. Yeah. This is where we sold our two downriver system two years back. And there was a, on a, one of them called a judgment levy. And that's still an outstanding. And that's where we were struggling with this accounting of an adjudgment levy. And again, this time I'm working with a consultant um, to make sure that this would not be a finding next year. And we are working with our uh, satellite MNB office to uh, you know, make sure that everything is in a place. Thank you. Okay, we'll skip number eight. That's with the treasurer's office. The same with number nine mm -hmm. and number 10. Okay. We're on number 11. This is the one with the federal program audit. It's a material weakness, material noncompliance with, with the Department of Economic Development, CDBG. The county did not submit the required Section 3 summary report for program year end of September 30th, 2020. The recommendation was that the county implement a methodology such as a checklist or calendar reminders to ensure that the required Section 3 report is completed and submitted annually. Additionally, the county should retain documentation used to compile the data for the report. Okay. This would be a Terry it's, Carroll. Terry on the line. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Oh. Um, again, we apologize for being a repeat finding. Uh, we already lost the argument that there were no, uh, there were no contracts that, uh, reached the threshold uh, in that in the in that year uh, but the uh, a firm of plant Moran said we still needed to submit the report which we did not do uh, we are in much better shape right now after having uh, changed the program where we are administering the funds uh, and we have a, a, a much tighter, uh, system right now in terms of uh, Section 3, and I don't think that you will see this in the future as a finding. Well, we appreciate that. <clears throat> so we apologize. And that completes the findings that were in the single audit. What we'll do at the next meeting, um, the Deputy Chief Financial Officer, Yogesh Kasani, He's going to do his presentation on the CAFA results. Then we'll also bring back these findings that were related to the treasurer's office and we'll make sure that we get a representative here at that meeting. So we'll do, we should be able to do both of them at one meeting. All righty, so. And if I could just add too, I'd like sure. to thank um, Management and Budget, Huey Newsom, Yogesh Gassani, Michael Bridges and Shantika Bullard for all their efforts in getting the financial statements done during the pandemic. I did think they did an outstanding job with what they were up against. You know, I had a conversation with Yogesh last night. I think it's a really good team working with our office. Mark mm -hmm. Apple helped from his office, myself, you know, working with M&B and Plant Moran. I think it's just one great team working to get it done. Thank you. I, I appreciate those comments too. Uh, <clears throat> any, anything further? That's all I have. So I don't think we'll uh, have anything to receive and file. So um, any comments from commissioners? Mr. Chair? Uh, Commissioner Colleen. <laughs> uh, I would move to um, pass this item for the day. Excellent. Uh, is there support? support? Support from, moved by Commissioner Colleen, support by, from Commissioner Clark Coleman. Mm -hmm. Yep, I know the name. And anyway, any any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Next item, Madam Clerk. Yes, such other matters as may be properly submitted before the committee. <coughs> there are none. Public comments. Uh, can you unmute everybody? And is there any We'll wait, everybody's unmuted. The ones are unmuted. Okay. Uh, the little hand is up for Commissioner Colleen. Do you have anything further, Commissioner Colleen? Say. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I still had the hand up from uh, my motion. Oh, okay. Uh, is there 
Okay, anybody from the public that'd like to comment? Going once. Anybody? This is Shantika Ballard. I'm not from the public. I'm from the county. Okay. But can okay. I make a comment, please? Anytime. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you. I would just like to thank everyone uh, for the audit process this year. Yogesh was of great assistance. All of the um, departments and the staff, Terry, Samaya, everyone who worked on this audit, we did an audit, um, pretty much a hybrid of remote and in office, a lot mm -hmm. of it being remote, our, our, our auditors were remote and it was a challenging audit and everyone stepped up and I just wanted to give an extra thank you um, to Terry's team, um, our previous uh, federal side of the single audits, we've had upwards of, you know, close to 10 findings three years ago, and we're mm -hmm. down to one this year. And this mm -hmm. one was a matter of timing. Um, you know, we possibly could have been at zero. So I just want to say thank you to everyone involved. Yeah, that's my goal to zero. So I appreciate it. And I appreciate your kind words. Thank you. I would have to agree with Shantika Sims. I think that's great going down to one findings in the federal program. Great job, Terry. Um, Thank you. Commissioner, uh, uh, Chair, I just, yes. like, I, I just like to say that um, I was, I'm pleased to, to see member of staff uh, come out and appreciate uh, the process and to let us know that uh, what they're doing and how it's working. So Shantika, uh, good for you. And if Commissioner Coleman's pleased, uh, you know, who could not be pleased? I'll be Thank quiet. You. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any, any further comments from the public? Any further comments from the public? Going twice. Any further comments from the public? Okay. Next item, Madam Clerk. Adjournment. So Is moved. A motion. It's been moved. Is there support? Support. Commissioner Dobbs supported. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All those opposed? Ayes have it. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.